um, talking about Joe Rogan, I feel like his brain is broken, right? I feel like COVID broke his brain, like it broke a lot of people's brain for whatever reason. And as, I love the guy, right? I love the podcast, love the guy. I've been watching the show since the very beginning. I think I might have started tuning in since... I'm mean, gonna say something stupid like episode 120 or something like that. That might be the first episode I actually watched, like for real. And um, I've been a fan of his forever since. I've been a fan of him just because he was one guy that was just, you know, like you and I rambling into a microphone or listening to people that ramble into microphones about a variety of topics. He seemed legitimately interesting, seemed like somebody that had a great group of friends, seemed to be living a life full of love and life love life and love whatever that kind of sign people put in their rooms um and seem to be really kind of person personifying what it means to have like fuck you money right where you kind of just do what you want you talk to your friends you give your friends a platform to become famous um you interview corn interesting people people that might not be in the mainstream news because you know usually whenever you see someone with a quote-unquote talk show it's always the kind of hot person the person on everyone's lip right it's never like an underground or an up-and-coming person it's never somebody that the 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 presenter actually likes is somebody that's just pushing in front of them right like if you see that the person like the years and years on some talk show it's not because the person interviewing them likes what he puts out it's just because at this current time he seems to be the guy that everyone's kind of talking about right it's, it was sam smith nice it's years and years guy whereas with joe rogan he'd interview some artists that you never heard of and artists that you probably didn't care for because he genuinely listened to them right do you know what i mean um so i I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. I've always been a big fan of his and I, and I love kind of his podcast and everything that he does. I'm not going to say that I don't. But let's be honest, COVID has broken his brain to levels that probably, I'm not too sure if it's going to ever, ever going to recover. I think COVID has turned into one of those things that Joe's just going to continue to, continue talking about until the end of time. Um, and it seems like he dedicates huge portions of his shows about it. It seems like he thinks about it often. It seems like he's greatly, wor he's deeply worried about it, which makes sense as well because let's be honest, COVID essentially decimated his industry, right? When it comes to stand-up com stand comedy or when it comes to live entertainment, it completely decimated, especially in North America. His ability to go and do shows, I think he had a big tour plan as well with Dave Chappelle that got cancelled, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, so he was doing a lot of things that were going to be, he was planning a lot of big things, especially in 2019 to into 2020, and they all got scuppered. And no matter how much money he had, he couldn't do anything to kind of rectify that. Until, of course, Dave Chappelle came through and was able to do those kind of outdoor shows. But COVID and the pandemic was one of those rare occasions where no matter how much wealth you had, you couldn't escape his kind of consequences or his effects, right? Or his affects, whatever you want to say, right? And I think maybe Joe Rogan kind of is still kind of getting to grips with that, that he couldn't fix the problem. He couldn't just throw money at it. He couldn't call somebody. And it just kind of, again, um, allowed him, allowed somebody who's clearly, again, regardless of what you think of, he's funny or not, he clearly loves stand-up stand -up comedy. He clearly thinks about that craft a lot he clearly performs a lot he's clearly going up all the time so for that part of his life to be completely taken away from him definitely felt like a bit of a blow but damn man joe needs to relax joe needs to fucking relax now he's on this fucking podcast talking about how he thinks he's a fucking what is he he thinks he's a scout right so this is a clip courtesy of the of the podcast where he's talking to a young lady i'm not too sure the young lady is i think it's a recent podcast i think she's a musician he seems to quite clearly like her that's one thing i'd say again a, a criticism of joe joe's taste in music is fucking awful let's be honest uh, outside of gary clark jr i can't think of a lot of people maybe snoop dogg again i does listen to snoop dogg daily i don't really know but joe rogan's taste in music is absolutely dog shite and in general when it comes to arts outside of you know, stand up, stand up comedy, even stand up comedy too. You assume some of his recommendations on people that he thinks are killers or monsters necessarily isn't the best. But again, we all have different tastes. But yeah, he seems to be talking to this young lady in his podcast, and he says something about him being a scout. I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know if he thinks he's a canary in a coal mine or something, but it's just weird. It really, really is weird. And again, like I said, as a big fan of his, it's just unfortunate to see that COVID has broken his brain to the point where Joe Rogan legitimately thinks he's been sent on earth to be like a messenger for us when it comes to COVID. And he's, he is a COVID Moses. He is a COVID Messiah. It's fucking bizarre. But let's watch this clip. Uh, I, I'm like a scout, right? Like if you sent me down the trail. You go, yeah. hey. I want you to go down the trail and gather up like a couple hundred million downloads a month and tell us what's up. Yeah, thanks for what you're doing for all of us. Tell us what seriously. You, tell us what's happening. You're a hell of a scout. This is what it's like. I'm not sure if she's joking. Thank you for what you've done with us, but this is part of the reason why Joe needs 
This is why it's important that Joe has someone like a Tim Dillon and then Ari Shafir around him. Even if you're not a fan of Ari Shafir, you, you know, you're still hung up about him dosing Burt back in the day. But let's be honest, those are the only two guys that we've seen so far on video who happen to be the two people that kind of push back on him. And still, Tim Dillon and Ari Shafir still are somewhat reserved and still somewhat pull themselves back when it comes to really going at Joe the way they would, the way they would their other friends. Just recently, Tim Dillon was on the show and Joe said something like, oh, the, the, the food in Austin is amazing. And if you listen to Tim Dillon's podcast, you'd know he's a bit of a pig, right? He likes to eat. Um, he's got a very refined palate when it comes to food, it seems like. And he's been letting us know at every given time when he's recording a show that the food in Texas is fucking garbage. He doesn't stop reminding us about the fact, right? So the fact that he, he would turn around and swallow his words and not say that back to Joe in his presence shows you the reverence he holds Joe Rogan in. But still, outside of that, he still pushes back. Same with RHF, they still push back. But these other people, like, thank you for your service, as if, like, he's in the army. What? It's already cringe enough as well in, in America when they, you know, see a random soldier and they go to him, thank you for your service, and you have no idea what that guy or girl did, right? You have no idea if they were even in the army in the first place. But now they're sitting across from Joe Rogan and saying, thank you for your service for what? What's thank you for your service? He started off being really worried about COVID. Then suddenly he started to become really kind of, um, he, started to, he started to kind of, not, not, dimin not diminish, but he saw it became a little bit, eh, it's not that big of a deal, right? When it came to COVID. Then he started to convince his audience or us or just speak out loud, basically, that he was staving off COVID because he does kettlebell swings and takes cold baths and cold showers. Then he got COVID and says he recovered in record time because of how fit he was. But he still got it, right? It doesn't matter. Obviously, he took the alternative medicines. I don't really give a shit about that. But he tried to make it seem like, oh, I got COVID because I didn't get it because I was fit. Then he gets it and he recovers quickly because I was fit. Okay, cool, whatever. And now he's kind of sending all these friends, his juju doctors, to come and hook them up whenever they get COVID. It's just like, huh? Like, I would love to know if the treatments for you recovering from COVID, um, like, like if you had to compare the juju doctor that Joe Rogan has and what you actually get from a hospital if you got money, what does what the kind of results are? I would say they're probably marginal. There's no, probably not much difference right like what what are what are these juju doctors actually doing outside of what these doctors in the general hospital have been doing for the majority of the population which has been saving the majority of lives is any different to what he's doing really and truly i think in the beginning if you didn't if you if you in the beginning you just said i'm not going to get the vaccination and i don't care what happens to me cool but then once you get it it kind of defeats the purpose because you got it now do you know what i mean it doesn't matter you've got it you got every whatever whatever you said you were doing that was preventing you from getting it didn't stop you from getting it, and now you got it and it's just like, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't. Especially when you've got as much money as this guy. Like, it's just, especially in a country that has no free healthcare. Like, it doesn't matter what you do, though, because no one else can do what you do because you have a lot of money. And even if they can do what you do, they can't do it to the extent that you can do because you have a lot of money. These are the same guys who after, when they go on, you know, these, these again, I love these comedians, but they're absolutely all worded, isn't it? After they go on a massive tour, getting on the lash and stuff before they go back home to their ch wives and children they're all going to sit in a hotel room so i think dave Chappelle does this and you'll get an iv right so they'll get ivs and get themselves um rehydrated and get vitamins in them and whatever else that iv drip does but essentially see all these old men in this hotel room hooked up to these fucking drips getting minerals and whatever pushed into their body most people can't afford that even guys who are you know, maybe opening for them can't afford that. I don't know, whatever, right? People that are maybe on the same level of them but maybe not as famous in terms of, yeah, maybe on the same level comedically but not the same level when it comes to fame, they probably can't afford that. They just have to go back home and drink bare bottles of water before they go see their, before they go kiss their wife at the airport or whatnot. That's all they can do. So this approach that somehow whatever he can do is somehow, some whatever, whatever he finds out is somehow going to be helpful to the general population doesn't make any sense. And also, he's just too... He's just too entrenched on that side. That's the problem with Joe at the moment. It feels like he was really concerned about COVID and he had all these, he had all these doctors on who were like doom mongers telling him about, oh, it's going to be a long five years, which might end up being a long five years of COVID, right? But then he's now gone completely on the other side where he's like talking to people who generally, generally, generally think COVID isn't that big of a deal and that it's all been blown out of proportion and that you just need to run a bit and get a bit of vitamin D and you'll be fine. It's like, ah, what? And I'm yeah. like, hey, 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 there's a cliff. <laughs> We're running towards a cliff. Stop, everybody. Everybody, stop. stop. We got to hit the fucking brakes. And they're like, you're an anti vaxxer. <laughs> and they just fucking keep going. <laughs> you don't believe in science. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Joe Rogan. <laughs> and, and I'm. 
but that science argument is kind of true. If Joe Rogan really backs his beef, right, and he's got the money he's got, if you really back your beef, why don't you just go and launch your own independent study or whatever it may be, right? Why don't you do a peer review on whatever Juju Doctor you got and then Why don't guys, you do that? I want to start. If you really back your beef and you really think your approach is better, go do it. Go go put your money where your mouth is, isn't it? Would you that be the logical thing to do? And then you can basically, you know, it's like what he does with On It, where he says, like, you know, it's been independent review. I don't know how true that all that shit is. I don't know. But I remember, you know, part of the ad read on On It is that, right? That it's been actually, um, it's been actually trialed and all this sort of stuff. Like, if that's the facts, and if you actually think what you're doing is right, and as Dana White said, Dr. Joe Rogan helped him out and whatnot. If that's the facts, then go out and show and prove. But they don't. They just talk from the microphone like how we are doing. But then they get annoyed when people call them out and say they are feeding infamous information out there. It's like, uh, I don't get it. I personally don't get it. But like I said, I love the guy. I'm still going to listen to the show. I still think in all intents and purposes, when it comes to somebody as rich and famous as he is, he's quite, in my opinion, probably the coolest multi-millionaire that exists in the world at the moment. He seems to be the most level-headed one. There's somebody with as much money he, as he has, as much fame as he has, to be in a position where he consistently keeps putting on people on his, he keeps putting people on his podcast to give them a chance to blow, give them more shine. Like the Brian Simpson dude, obviously I've kind of known from um, your mum's house, stand-up comedian. He's not that well known. He puts him on his show just to give him a bit of shine because he likes him. Like all these sort of things that he does that he doesn't need to do goes to show that the guy's got a good heart, for sure. But like everybody else in during the pandemic, COVID has broken his brain, right? It's broken our brain in different ways. Some of us have decided to stop doing certain things, to stop talking to certain friends. And it's broken Joe Rogan's brain because it denied him the possibility to kind of continue on with his career that's dependent on him talking in front of large audiences, right? In dim, in kind of dimly lit rooms with not much ventilation. Like he needs that space. So the fact that COVID decimated it makes it makes it makes some sense why he's a little bit loopy when it comes to COVID, but he needs to relax. Like he needs to chill. He needs to chill a little bit. It's getting a bit too much. Listen to the show and hearing him rant and raves about the pandemic and the lockdowns and stuff. But you know, we we move in love and light. We move in love and light.